together. James opens up and telling us about our tongue in this last installment here, connects it still with our verse from last week. He said that, that booger is mean. Will anybody agree that your tongue can be a bit mean? Amen. That's all right. You don't have to say man, I know. You don't have to say man at all. That our tongues can be mean. Proverbs 18 and 21 has been a standing scripture we've been using for several Sundays. He says this in Proverbs 18, 21. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. And those who love it will eat its fruits. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. And those who love it will eat its fruits. If what comes out of your mouth is death and decay and, and destruction, he says you need to know you're going to reap all that's coming out of your mouth. Can you say amen? Amen. If life is in your tongue, you're the person that loves to inspire, he says that stuff's going to come back to you good, in, in a good bundle because he says you're going to eat the fruit of that because you're putting out life. Can you say amen? Amen. All of us have been given, watch this, this power. The text says we've been given a power. A power that lies right here in our mouths. Give context for you. Each one of us, those of us who have children, think about the power you hold to direct your child into the right way of life by just what comes out of your mouth. The influential power that we have on the inside of our mouths that can turn our children left or right, that can encourage them or discourage them. For some reason, God gave us that power. Isn't that amazing? Yes. God gave us that kind of power that sits in our mouths. And so James, while he is presenting something to us, I think my son's going to help me preach today. If not, Okay, good. We take him in the back room if he tries to preach while I'm preaching. All right, James says he wants us to see a few things in this text because it's important for us. Because James really lets us know a couple of things that we need to consider. James tells us that he has had an experience. He has experienced this. He says that he's experienced the fact that people do both. That people bless God and curse people. That's right. James says, he says, I'm not dreaming this, this, I'm not making this up. He says, I'm down here passionate in Jerusalem. And he says, I noticed something that, that God's people, that we both bless God and curse people with our mouths. And he said, we curse the people that God himself have created. Mm -hmm. Let me bring context for this word curse means, for those of you that you, you enjoy a few four-letter words, three-letter words, for those of you, that's not this context that he's talking about, actually. Uh, so I'm not raining on your parade for your, the foul language you like to use. Actually, what he is saying, though, he is talking about actually speaking a curse on someone. Yes. Telling, saying something in the context of someone where they are cursed and evil is spoken over them. They are, they are. I'll give you more later, but they are, uh, they're not blessed. It's, you call them everything but a child of God. You, right. you are not blessing that individual. It may contain some four-letter and three-letter, maybe even five-letter words. You bad thing, you. You bad. It may contain some of those words, but he is saying one thing he noticed, what he experienced is that, number one, that he noticed we do both. We curse and bless with this same mouth. I'm not sure when he saw it while he was pastoring down at the church in Jerusalem, having worshiped with the Palestine people. And he's, I don't know, watching his people move throughout the crowd. And after Sunday service, he's watching his people. And maybe he looked out into the camel parking lot and saw people standing out there and talking. And one thing he noticed, maybe he noticed that there was some crazy choir members that were out there. Mm -hmm. Maybe he noticed there was some dirty deacons acting up out there. I don't know. Maybe he noticed there was some perverted preachers. I don't know what he saw, but he saw something amongst the people that made him say, I noticed they do both. There might have been some ugly acting ushers that were going on out there. I don't know. Maybe the church announcer had an attitude. I don't know what he saw, but what he heard was enough to make him say, you know what? They do both. It might even have been some mean musicians that were out there cutting up, saying what they were saying. But he said, I noticed that God's people do both. 
Whatever he experienced, let him know that we bless and curse God with this tongue that God himself has given us. How do we curse people with this tongue? We say things like this. You'll never be anything. Mm -hmm. Why are you so stupid? You're just like your daddy. You're just like your mama. Why can't you be like somebody else? Your brother, your sister, your cousin, and then. Do you, can you ever do, can you do anything right? Mm -hmm. I've heard that for myself. <laughs> You're a loser. You're a joke. You're a loser. You're a joke. We say things like, I wish, some of you say, I wish I never had kids. Mm -hmm. Or, if it weren't for them kids. Mm -hmm. For it weren't for y'all. Mm -hmm. preacher, that's not cursing, that is cursing. Yeah, is. That's saying, that's saying you're not valuable. Mm -hmm. That my life would have been something had not been for mm -hmm. you. Mm -hmm. Imagine what that does in the minds of children, of, your, mm -hmm. of those that we raise that hear those. Mm -hmm. And even say some things like that. I only married you because <laughs> you, you don't even have to fill in the blank. <laughs> you can imagine. I only married you because my wife says to me sometimes. She, she says to me sometimes. <laughs> she said, well, I only married you to help save your soul. <laughs> I only married you to keep you from going to hell. <laughs> She might be right. But <laughs> we say things and encounter words like that, that curse. They bring cursings on children. They bring curses on your husband, your wife. You're speaking things onto people that damages their soul and their mind or conscience. That hurts them. And he says, James is saying, we can inspire, but he does notice that we have the power to do both. Mm -hmm. To both curse and bless. The question is, what, what do we really want to do? He said, Preacher, I wouldn't do it if they wouldn't make me so mad. <laughs> if they wouldn't get on my nerves, I, would, I wouldn't call them the things I call them. And I would challenge you and say to you that you call them, them the things that you call them because it's already in you. Those things are in your heart. Those things are living there. Those things are, maybe it's something ha that happened to you when you were growing up that doesn't justify you passing that curse on to someone else. Mm -hmm. It's a time in your own life where you say, I can continue to live like a mad, angry person, bitter person, someone passing on my, my, my bitterness. I can live like that and pass it on, or I can cut this thing off, and I can allow Jesus to put light in my heart and let everything that comes out of my mouth be, not be a cursing, but a blessing. Yes. Anybody want to bless? Yes. Not just bless the Lord, but bless our brothers and bless yes. our sisters. Yes. There's a lot of foolishness going on. Amen. We don't need any more cursing. Right. We need to be blessing people. It doesn't matter if you're singing the choir, if you're serving the usher, if you're giving to the poor, if you're preaching, you're fasting, you're praying, you're doing communion, and you're doing all of that in the name of Jesus. If you, church, we talked about this before, if you and I are deceivers, defamers, disruptors, and discouragers, our worship is nothing. Amen. Those things that we do in the name of the Lord, and we say things that hurt brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus, and, and those that are looking to come into the faith, we, our worship, all that religious activity is nothing. Nothing. It has no value. It's absolutely worthless. Mm -hmm. James says he notices, he experienced that we do both. Mm -hmm. Secondly, he says in the text that he gives us this exhortation. Yes. He gives us an exhortation here in the text. He notices that we can do both. We can both bless God and turn around and curse people with the same tongue that he's blessed us with. Yes. And then he turns around and gives us this exhortation and tells us that we should not do both. Mm -hmm. That we should not bless and curse. Mm -hmm. You almost got to make up your mind which side of the fence you're going to be on. Mm -hmm. Jesus said when he had John to write this letter to the Revelation church, he, to the churches in Revelation, he said to them, he, said, he says, you are neither hot nor cold. And he said, it, it disgusts me. He said, matter of fact, I'm going to vomit you out of my mouth because you're, either, you're not even hot or cold. He says, you're trying to do the thing in the middle. He said, make up your mind. I'd rather, Jesus said, I'd rather you be hot or cold. 
make up your mind. There's something about indifference and trying to walk in the middle of the road that he's not comfortable with. He says that he notices we do both, but the exhortation in this text, in James chapter 3, he says that we should not bless and curse. Look at verse 10, it says, from, from the same mouth comes blessings and cursing. Simple. My brothers, these things ought not to be so. This is not a suggestion. <laughs> this is not how he feels or what he thinks. He says, as Christian brothers and sisters, we must talk different than the world. As Christian brothers and sisters, God, in this text, he tells us, gave us the power. There's life and death in our mouths. He gave us the power to bless and curse, but... He gives us the responsibility of choosing which one we're going to do. He says here, the exhortation is, don't, don't, don't bless me with your mouth and curse the people I've created. Where you say, I don't like them, they're not like me. He says, I still created them. Mm -hmm. Let me make your face look real crazy. Uh, even practicing homosexuals, you, you see them kiss. Oh, so it is not my preference, but... They still God. They still were created by God. I said they were created by God. Yeah. People that you don't, that don't look like you, don't smell like you, don't act like you. Those same people that we put our mouths on, God created them. Whether they are serving God or not, God created them. Not only did He create them, brother Clive, but He went to the cross. Yes. He died on the cross for all humanity. The confused ones, the straight ones, the mean ones, the loving ones, the perverted ones. He, the murdering ones, he went on the cross and died for all humanity. So he says, don't be cussing folk that I have created. Because he has given us that great power. Instead, he tells us that we ought to bless not only him, but bless one another. The text tells us that he gives us an exhortation. Romans chapter 12 verse 14 says this. Even when you upset with folk, he says, Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse them. Robert, come on, stop it. I'm just trying to tell you what the text says. Is this easy? No. Because you won't call everybody, you won't call certain people some names that you really feel they deserve. But he says, don't curse them, but bless them. No, no. He says, take your tongue and use it to glorify God by blessing them. The best thing you can do when you're upset with somebody or you've got beef going on, this because we all deal with disagreements, we all deal with arguments, some kind of, kind of confrontation, is the best thing you can do is to actually pray, pray. for them. Amen. Pray. Pray for them. Amen. Say, Lord, bless them. Lord, they did me wrong, but Lord, would you please bless them? Everybody say amen. 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 Uh -huh. You say, Lord, please bless them. Yes. Lord, they've done me wrong. They've hurt me. They've offended me. But Lord, please bless them. And Robert, I hear you, but they deserve punishment. True. But he says, bless those who persecute you. They will do you wrong. They will lie on you. They will talk about you. He says you need to bless them. Hey, guess what? They may call you a dirty name. Mm -hmm. He says you still ought to bless them. They may give you that finger that is above all fingers <laughs> on the highway. <laughs> you still are to bless them. He yes. said, Preacher, we, nobody can live like that. No human being can, but with God in your life, oh. with the Spirit in your life, oh. all things are possible. He tells us we must be people who bless and the only way you can do that is when you have the peace of God in your heart. Yes. Amen. You know, you shouldn't even let... It's one thing for my wife to say something to me and it, it rubs me the wrong way. But it's another thing when strangers... Mm -hmm. When strangers... Mm -hmm. Some of us live so sensitively that even if strangers say something or do something, you fly off the handle and you're going to beat somebody's brains out. What, what for? They have no influence in your life. That's right. Let, let that go. Mm -hmm. Move it on. Don't, don't, don't even lose your gonna say lose salvation. Don't lose time trying to address, especially strangers uh -huh. who don't know you. Right. They could have been having a bad day. Mm -hmm. They something's going on in their life. Mm -hmm. right. Let move on. You, you, don't let people affect you like that. You and I, when you have peace in your heart, everybody doesn't touch your heart. Uh -huh. 
It's some place that is reserved for the Lord and He protects it. You've got to move on from there so that you can function in society. He says we should bless those who persecute us and bless those who, who cur and, and bless those who curse us. We don't curse other people. You, you know, they call you a dirty name. You have to get over it because um, they ain't the first time you've been called a dirty name. Amen. It won't be the last time. You just ain't heard. That's right. You, just, just move on. Everything will be all right. First Peter chapter three verse nine says this from the easy reader version. It says, "Don't do wrong to anyone to pay them back for doing wrong to you." Or, don't insult anyone to pay them back for insulting you. But ask God to bless them. Do this because you yourselves were chosen to receive a blessing. What? He says, since the Lord has given you a blessing, he says you ought to turn around and give a blessing to others. You said they don't deserve it. They've done me wrong. Did you know the Bible says when we were yet without strength, the Lord sent a blessing our way. And due time, he put Jesus on the cross for you and for me. Is that good shout news this morning or what? You didn't deserve it. None of us were good enough. None of us were worthy enough. But God sent Jesus to the... He blessed us indeed. Has anybody been blessed this morning? That the Lord took care of you, your sin-sick soul. He put Jesus on the cross for you. So we should bless. Can you say amen? I'm going to be done quicker than I'm bought with this sermon. Listen, that we have the power to influence with our tongue, church. God has given us the power to be a positive influence in someone's life or to be an extremely negative influence in someone's life. Yes. James says he has experienced that we do both. We bless and curse. Then James gives us the exhortation. We are not to do in both. Do one or the other. Preferably bless. He wants us to bless. That's the exhortation. But then, out of all of this, James gives us an exam. It's in verse 11 and 12. Let's look at the exam. He tells us what we should do. He says this in verse 11 and 12. Does a spring pour forth from the same opening both fresh and salt water? Can a fig tree, my brothers, bear olives or a grapevine producing fruit or producing figs? Neither can a salt pond yield fresh water. So listen, we've been, James the entire time has been giving us word pictures. So the first two word pictures we have were the bits in a horse's mouth. All right, we had the bit in the horse's mouth. That little bit in a horse's mouth could turn the horse, the horse's whole body, left or right. Just this one thing in his mouth and the, the dude pulling on the string. Not only the bit in the horse's mouth, but also it was a rudder that belonged to a ship. That you see a ship, the big ships, the cruise ships, at the bottom of those big cruise ships is a is a rudder that is and is nowhere near the size of the ship. But that small thing can turn the entire vessel left or right. He says the tongue is just like that. Mm -hmm. It has that kind of influence. Mm -hmm. The third and fourth word picture he gave us, we talked about last week, was fire. Mm -hmm. And what else? Y'all didn't do your homework. I do try. What was the other one? Anybody up? Fire or what? Huh? Let's go. Wild animals. He talked about animals. Jesus. Mary and Joseph. He talked about wild animals. He talked about wild animals. He said, our tongue were like fire. And he says our tongues can burn, our tongues can cause injury, and our tongues were like a wild animal. If you don't bring it under control, we said that your tongue, like a wild animal, can hunt people, hurt people. Um, it, it can do all kinds of things. So he gives us these word pictures so we can connect together. So he gives us two more word pictures, one being water. Our, our mouths are like water, and the other one is like a tree. He says, here's the example he says, our words, our mouths can be just like water, fresh water and salt water. Fresh water, fresh water can satisfy you when you're thirsty. Fresh water can, listen, sanitize you when you're dirty. Anybody know what I'm talking about? You finally took a bath this morning. You understand, salt, fresh water can clean you up. Not only can it do that, but fresh water can save you. That if you are dehydrated, 
If you're not getting enough water in your body, if you get water in your body, it can save you. Mm -hmm. Did you know, just in case you were wondering, that the body is made up of up to 75% of water? Yes. You should drink your water. That's your health tip for today. He says that we should be like fresh water. Not only can fresh water be good, but he also mentioned salt water. Salt water has some good qualities, but salt water is not good for drinking. Mm -hmm. If you drink salt water, you will die. Eventually you will die because the content of salt is so dangerous. Salt water can cause death. Salt water can cause danger, damage, and salt water can cause destruction. If you live near the beach, there's salt water there. And if there's a hurricane there, there's going to be damage and destruction. Mm -hmm. Salt water isn't always good. James tries to give us this word picture of what our mouths can do. Again, he says that our mouths can be like water. We can refresh people or we can damage people. Uh -huh. You can refresh them with the word, revive them with a good word, or you can drain them with the words that come out of your mouth. I had an encounter this week where uh, someone at work pulled me aside and wanted to ask me a few questions. And one particular question they asked me about what to do with their partner or the person they're, they're with because when certain things happen, that partner would use this terminology, uh, I'm going to hurt myself. I'm going to hurt myself. And they didn't know whether or not, they didn't want to dismiss it. Because when someone uses that kind of terminology, I'm going to kill myself or I'm going to hurt myself, that's not something you just you look over. You, you don't know what's really going on in that person's mind. And you're trying to figure out, well, well what do I do? Do I, do I hang in there? Or do I let them do what they're going to do? And so they were asking me, you know, well, what, what, what should I do? And I gave them some advice based on their, uh, their situation. And as they were talking, I was thinking about how draining that is. Because that person who is making that statement to them, they are draining the life out of that other person. Because that person who may want to get out of the relationship is only staying because of, I don't want to see you hurt yourself. I like you, I, I may not like you enough to stay, but I don't, I don't dislike you enough that I want to see you dead. So that person is sitting here having to make a decision. Okay, so i got to put up with this because if I don't, they might hurt themselves. Mm -hmm. How draining that is to do that, to make that kind of stuff. See, we have such power in our mouths, you don't, you don't realize you can control and manipulate people by just how you, yes. just the, the words you use. Mm -hmm. I'm going to do this to myself if you don't give me what I want. Isn't that really what's going on? Yes. That's what's really going on. When you give me what I want, then then we'll be okay. But the problem with that is, uh, to, for that person that was making that statement, uh, it, the issue is, what you have isn't genuine. Because mm -hmm. they're not staying because they want to. they staying because they don't want to see you hurt yourself. Right. So what you got is not the truth. You have a sham. So what we say with our mouths can control people and manipulate people, and not for the better. It, it, it's getting what you want, but really it's draining someone else, the life out of somebody else. The relationship is really no good. And the best thing to do is, hey, watch this. Man, brother and sister, watch this. Deal with it. Look at somebody and say, deal with it. Be excited about it and say, why don't you just deal with it? Everybody got to deal with it. Everyone, as I told you last week, every one of us face conflict. Every one of us face setbacks. Every one of us face losing jobs at some point, losing a relationship. We lose this. We lose that. Life is that like that. You lose things. At, one, at some point or another, somebody you really love and care about will die. Mm -hmm. That's life. Got to have a conversation with somebody now who, who's mad with God because, because God took somebody they love. That, that's life. That's the circle of life. Didn't you see the Lion King? It's life. And all of us face conflicts. And you can't, you can't, listen, you can't force yourself on somebody because things aren't working out for you. You can't do people with wrong with your mouth so you can get what you want, what makes you happy. No, you got to learn to deal with it. Sometimes you deal with it alone. Sometimes you, you don't. It's all a part of life. And if you're not careful, you'll let 
that bitterness and anger and resentment and that manipulate, manipulative thinking you got going on hurt somebody else. Yes. Because God has given us the power mm -hmm. with our minds to have life and death. Can you say amen? amen? So he says, he gives the second example. He says water, the second example is the trees, and I'm done. He said the tree produces um, olives and the tree produces figs. The tree is refreshing. The tree will feed you. The tree will give you shade from the heat. Our mouths are like that. We can give shade. We can give relief. We can bring. We can bring peace. We can bring joy. We can bring nourishment by what comes out of our mouths. Yes. People can be refreshed when they leave you. You ever been in a room with somebody who had this? They're so negative. Every. I mean, they, they can point out every wrong thing that's going on. You at work. You at work, and they're telling you how bad this boss is, and they're telling you how bad that coworker is, and 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 the only thing I'm thinking about is my paycheck. Is good on Wednesday. That's what I'm thinking about. <laughs> when they get on my nerves and they start getting in my face and stuff's happening, I think about on Wednesday that paycheck's gonna hit that account and they're gonna be able to pay my water bill and my light bill and I gotta go grocery shop. I, I, I think differently than, than I can deal with it. Can you say amen? I can deal with it. But there's some people who are so negative it drains the life out of you and he says that God's given us the power that we shouldn't take life, we should be giving life. Amen. I'm going to give you three quick things I think that will help us and we're out of here today. I'm going to give you some inspiring words and three characters that will help you today. Here's the first thing I want you to know. First thing I want us to do, here it is, we should acknowledge others. These are inspiring words. We should acknowledge others. Acknowledge others. He said, Preacher, what's, so, what's the big deal about that? Watch this. Did you know saying hello and hi and good morning and good day and goodbye is okay? Yes. You know, bless somebody. It makes a humongous difference in somebody's life. There's a generation today that just... They, my wife and I went out to dinner and we, were, we, were just, we just said it was a shame. And the two people went out to dinner and both of them were on their own. They sat right across from each other just like, you going to I mean, that's the life we, I'm like this, I can save 30 bucks. We can do this at the house for free. Or two hot dogs and, you know, you know. Do this for free. <laughs> Acknowledging somebody, saying please and thank you. Just preach it. Come on, that people don't do it. In this fast-paced world, people will not do it. There's listen, one of the best things you can do to inspire somebody, just acknowledge that they exist. Hello, good morning. How are you? Simple. Here's the second thing I want to show you. He says, not only acknowledge others, uh, uh, I think we can do this. Admit when you're wrong. Admit when you're wrong. Words like, I'm sorry, I was wrong, please forgive me. I'm sorry, I was wrong, please forgive me. And here's the third one I think we can do. That we should answer with grace. Answer with grace. I forgive you, I love you, and I'm praying for you. We should answer with grace. We should have words that respond even when people offend you, when your boo come back to you and says, I was wrong, I'm sorry. Instead of, I know you was wrong the whole time. I told you that. <laughs> Will you forgive me? I think about it. No. I forgive you. Now. Right now. <laughs> and I'll be working on it tomorrow. <laughs> and I might be working on it next week, but I promise you. I'm working on forgiving you <laughs> right now. <laughs> Did you know saying I love you, it, it, it brings peace in someone's heart. Listen, saying I love you doesn't always mean it's erotic or it's, it's in a sexual way. It, it, it is just, uh, just acknowledging the love that you have for somebody. You can say I love you with the love of the Lord. I, 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 I admonish everybody to do that who's not married to one another. You know, say to each other, I love you. With the love of the Lord, okay? I keep things right in perspective. But saying I love you, I know some men that grew up and their dad, their men, the fathers never said I love you to the wives. And they and they and, and she know I love her, man. She know I love her. 
No, it's okay. Say it. Let them hear. They need to hear you. Women need to hear. They need to hear. They know I love. I pay the light bill and I put food on the table. That's why us men think. We I put food on the table. That, I love them. I come home every night. <laughs> That's love. But no, you, you have to say it. You have to say it. Women need to hear that. Not only I love you, but then also finally I'm done. I'm praying for you. I'm praying for you. I'm really lifting you up before the Lord. I'm praying for you. God has given us the power to inspire with our tongues. And I pray through this three messages we've talked about the tongue that you will do that. Let the Lord use your mouth. Think about what you're going to say. And sometimes if you can't say a word, just just some say don't wave your wave your hand. Don't don't do anything. Just, just somebody need to put your hands in your pockets. Just don't do nothing. Nothing. Don't do anything. Ask the Lord to give you strength so that you can be able to bear it. Because I believe Christians, the biggest issue we have a lot of times is what comes out of our minds. And many of us have lost jobs because of what comes out of our mind. Many of us have lost some stuff because of what would that come out of our mouths. I'm finished, church. Can you give the Lord a mighty hand of church? Let's be inspired by the tongue. Let's bow our heads and we have a word of prayer. Father, we thank you for our time together in the word of God. We thank you, Lord, as we've been speaking about the issue of the tongue, our mouths, Lord. For some reason, you gave us the power to bless and curse. What an awesome responsibility, Jesus. With such a responsibility, Lord, we need help. We need help today. James says, Lord, you spoke through James to tell us that no man can contain this beast that is one inch below our, our noses. Yes. Lord, since we cannot do it, we need you today. Yes. Jesus, we want to give you our hearts, first of all. Yes. Lord, that you might fill our hearts with your presence, you. with your love, with your peace, yes. with your joy. Fill our hearts, Lord. You know. And then, Lord, we want you to also fill our mouths. Help us. Lord, we need help, Lord. There's some things we let come out of our mouths at just a drop of a hat. Some things, Lord, that are not pleasing in your sight. Some things, Lord, we say that just intentionally hurt people because we're mad. Lord, we need help from that issue yes, today. Yes, thank you, Lord. It's not just what we let come out of our mouths, Jesus. It's also what we send through Facebook and through text messaging. God, we, we really, we really want to turn these things over into your hands and ask you today, Lord, to bless us and help us we want, to cur we want to bless people and not curse them, Lord. We want to be a blessing. Now, Father, we open the altar for the invitation. We ask, Lord, that you let your will be done. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.